my show. And uh, that makes me ill. I mean, it makes me kind of... No, no, it's okay, but it makes me think about it anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, we, we, we attended the previous show the day before. They had a, an episode of the show recorded there in yeah. the studio. And we were there to to learn about how things go and stuff like that. Is what we were there. They always did that. Had everybody do that. And uh, at the end, of the, they had a policeman and a policewoman. I think were the that was the the hook that got them on the show. You had uh -oh. to have some kind of hook to be get you had on to the have show. Hook and that was the that the orange bowl. Hook. The orange bowl was our hook. Right. And, uh, and their hook was that they were both police people. Yeah. And so that's the people that were on the day before. That's fine. And uh, we were watching them. And at the end of the show, they would give a promo for the next day. It was normal. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So the promo uh, was tune in again tomorrow when June decides between the two fullbacks. <laughs> Where did they come up with that? Because they knew the story that Fred Cohn introduced me to her. <laughs> so I, she made up her mind a long time ago, but they played it like, well, yeah. that's hilarious. I jumped up out of my seat and I said, I am out of here. I'm not getting married. It's over for me. I'm done. Were you afraid they were going to sneak Fred Cohn in and have some kind of weird no, interaction? No, I was just afraid he was going to hear about it. Um, in, in Green Bay, where he was playing at the time. And think, I don't need this. And, 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 well, and, just and, think, you know, well, that's the bullshit if I've ever heard it. Right, because if I you totally, had signed up to... I to, totally got to go after her. I, you know, I, my heart wasn't broken at all. And if he was had thought that you had been agreeing to that kind of a setup, yeah. he, he would have not liked it. He yeah. would have not liked me, but he would have yeah. thought I was making that lame, shit. stupid, silly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got up and said, "I'm done. I'm out of here. At that, uh, I can't handle it." And I went out of the studio and down on the street. Oh, and so you saw that live in the studio? I saw it live. Live in the studio. Okay, I was some, somehow. Yeah, no, I no, that, yeah. no, no, no. Go back. I saw it in their preparation for live. Oh, okay. Oh. And and preparation for live meant you do it, and then all of a sudden the lights come on and say, this is the real thing. Yeah. It, the live was just before the actual thing. Yeah, yeah. So I stomped out before the live went yeah. on television. Yeah. I'm down on the street. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no idea. I'm leaning up against a car on a street in New York. And I'm thinking, this. I just can't stand this. This is bullshit. I, uh, totally. And I don't know how much time passed. It must have been close to 30 minutes, but maybe shorter than that. But Dad walked down and walked up to me and he said, in the live performance, they were not able to do that build-up for tomorrow. It didn't go on the air. Wow. It just ran over. You mm -hmm. know, like in those days. Which makes perfect sense. Live television, you know, it ran over. And that took me to there, you know. I, I was totally relaxed. Yeah. I thought, well, Fred didn't hear that, you know. Because it was like, will June decide, will it be, I don't remember if they said Fred's name, will it be this Between the two fullbacks. Between the two fullbacks, she'll make the decision tomorrow or something like that, you know. I and mean, even separate from, from your relationship with Fred Cohn, it would have still sucked to hear this silly, oh, oh she hasn't even decided yet. It was, I mean, yeah. You know, it was just and, ugly and every not, way you look at it. Yeah, it was ugly every way you look at it. And uh, anyway, when Dad said, 
they didn't. Uh, they didn't get that on the air. They didn't get it on the air. That was just the practice. That just that. relaxed me totally. And uh, and you could tell he then, he was serious. You didn't worry that he was just saying that. Yeah. And then then he said that June has told <laughs> that she wants to rewrite the whole interview coming up to the tomorrow. And they've said okay. <laughs> so she's up there working. <laughs> she's working on the script. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently she got it satisfied to her satisfaction and told me not to worry about it. And Boy, so to have been a fly they, on the wall in that room while she was working with them. That the next been, day oh. while we were interviewed, sitting together, you know, in, in front of the camera. Yeah. The next day, and it was um, a whole different deal. And everything was smooth that day. Yeah. It, nothing went bad that the day we got married everything was A plus we were supposed to be given a well we were on air given this vacation in New Hampshire at a ski lodge and neither one of us wanted to do that so she talked them into letting us stay in New York for the whole uh, that's a lot more fun oh yeah for us it was wow Probably a lot of people would have gone skiing. Well, I think most of them would have been people who had been to New York way too much already, and they wanted to get away and go yeah. skiing. But yeah. Like the policemen, they would have liked to go skiing. Probably. Yeah, yeah, because they're sick of the city. Yeah. But, but, but most um, people are. in our case, that's what we So we got this fantastic week in New York. Oh, that's <sighs> Well, that story just gets funnier and funnier and funnier the more you get into the details. Because, for one thing, starting at the very top, even the most famous people you know in the world in Hollywood don't have this story of, well, we came out of nowhere and got married on TV in New York because yeah. she wrote a letter to them and then they said, you know, I yeah. mean, nobody gets to do that. And then all the drama around it, and Nanny getting the TV to watch it. I still yeah. can't believe she lived through it. It's quite a story. Yeah, that must have been during her... And uh, Big Jim and Buddy getting to enjoy the New York experience. Actually going up there, man. That's, oh my goodness, great Jesus. Big that's Jim had been to New York, but Buddy had. Mm-hmm. Lordy, have, and, and did Holly get herself up there? Not that I, you know, I can't remember a damn thing about Holly. Might have been a certain number of tickets and a certain amount of money involved. Or Sydney, or, you know, I don't, I don't remember mm -hmm. anything at all about possibilities for them to be involved. That's interesting. Well, I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, somebody to give her away, that was important, that was chosen. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't remember any other. Well, it's they they put a lot of money into, you know, in the in, in one sense it's a cheap show because you just got two people who are going to get married anyway, so we just yeah. gotta get them married. And we got to give them uh, some furniture and a vacation. Right, and then on the other side of it, um, you you got to make it to be a real family gathering. So you've got to pay some tickets and bring some people up there. Well, I don't remember whether, I, frankly, I don't remember whether they uh, comped uh, our guests or not, or whether they comped us, for that matter. I just don't remember. I thought there was comping involved uh, from some conversation. Uh, that's beyond me. I don't remember ever having that discussion or knowing anything about it. Yeah, yeah. I know Dad would go to New York whether it comes in or not. That is so funny. He was looking forward to it. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd love to have been with Big Jim in New York. <laughs> I bet that would have lit him up big time. Oh, on it and that was one of his greatest moments coming down and telling me you, know, you just gotta 
take your time. Let me tell you what happened. Because he, yeah, he, he was sensitive enough and thoughtful and smart enough to know exactly what you were thinking. Yeah. And yeah. to say, oh, yeah. And he also was sharp enough to stay there until he saw what happened. Yeah. You know, because if he hadn't, if he'd come right down with you and said, oh, I agree, it's so, that yeah. sucked. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. Then it would have just been, at the very least, you would have had a miserable time on the show, and at the very worst, you would just skip town. Um, but he stayed there and saw it, and uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> and when you left, was Mama sitting right next to you, and you just left, and she st stayed there because she I'm knew she had... I'm out of here. I'm, I can't do this. And she stayed, and by the time and you I'm came... I'm not back, saying it was an adult thing to do. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, she stayed. Uh, oh, I, I knew she would have stayed. I just wondered where she was at the moment. I can't tell you what happened there. But you were sitting next to each other somewhere, I guess. Yeah, but all I'm saying, I, when I got up to walk out... What, after? Yeah. I wasn't that. looking around to see what happened to anybody. Oh, no, no, no. I know that, yeah. Um, I was mad at June oh, at the moment, frankly. Yeah, and she was probably like... Now I got some shit to deal with, even separate from you. I mean, just like she knew too. Well, this isn't exactly. I mean, yeah. she didn't see that. Coming. Yeah, she saw it. She was gonna have to go talk to someone. Right, that ship. If I was gonna be crazy. Well, and also she didn't. She didn't write it. Oh, this is gonna be so sexy and funny. The two fullbacks fighting for you know. She didn't write. Well, it like I still that. don't know all of that. Well, you always have to wonder, but yeah. Um. Nah, well, the way she told me the story a uh, couple of three times, never that. Just She just saw that show and said, I'm going to sit down and I just think adds up. You know, he's done this, I've done that, looks good. I think it was, a, I think she tried to make it like Romeo and Juliet, just the perfect couple, just the most wonderful, happy couple is how well, she was. that. Yeah. And she, that's what I mean, but she, the way she described it to me when she told me about making the decision to send the letter and thinking about it and everything, she just told me that she, uh, that's how she saw it too, but it's also how she played it. She told me how she wrote it. We were talking about how to, she was really bragging about her writing of the letter and saying, and so I said this and this and this, and it was all just as perfectly Prince Charming and and uh, Mona Lisa kind of thing, you know, just, uh, and she said, I thought that sounds great, mixed with Clemson and me, me being a bit of a debutante kind of whatever, you know, just making herself out to be at least a, a pretty successful socialite kind of person, you know. She didn't have much going there, but. Well, she played it that way is what she taught me, that, that, that she was a. Uh, a beautiful socialite, you know, and he's this, and uh, I don't know if she sent pictures or not. I can't remember if she said that. But she was really, and like I said, if there was anything other than just pure romantic story in her letter, she didn't even hint at it. But she was very proud of that letter. And I felt like I saw a copy of it at some point. But I know I didn't. It's just I, that she... I never. Uh, it's, uh, and I don't know if there ever was a copy. I don't she, she might have just written it and sent it. No idea. But um, she told me the story of writing the letter, just of writing the letter, in such detail that I felt like I'd read it. I'd read Did that she letter. not talk about Iris? Hmm. In my Iris? Who she, a lady she worked with who suggested ever, June had never heard of that firm. No, that rings, and, that rings Iris a really distant bell. Iris worked in the bell. same office mm -hmm. with them and was, um, lived close enough to go home for lunch. And what was the office? Um, 
Well, it was, a, it was a job she had, and Iris was a co-worker, and she lived close enough to go home at lunch and see the show Iris. and come back. Iris. Iris did, yeah. yeah. Um, God, I couldn't. I worked there at that mill on third shift that night from 12 to 8, to eight in the morning. And she and was I, in the office there and worked yeah, with Iris. and I can't say the name of it, and Shorty Russell was... No, that rings a bell. She, she I, I, that does ring a bell. Yeah, but she, I'm she never to said, "Oh, I discovered the show and I wrote I'm letters." I'm trying She's to remember the name of the middle. I can't believe I've lost that. Uh, God, I'm on, that's gonna bug me until I find out the name. Um, but now that rings a bell. Just because I knew it so well is what's bugging me. That rings a bell that she was tipped off to the idea that this was oh, a, yeah, a possibility. Right. And in their office, she may have told you this, but in their office they had, uh, that was what was funny. I always thought it was the most hilarious thing I ever heard from an office. And I think that uh, uh, those two girls that are so good on television, yeah. they would love to have put this into the office, but... There was a guy named Jack, and he was a jackass. <laughs> and Iris, Iris, was extremely tall and had legs almost as tall as she was, so she was high ass. And then there was Lois, who was about this high, <laughs> who was so low hilarious. ass. <laughs> High ass and low ass. And jackass. And jackass. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh. Well, that's something. I, I, I really am. Is who went home every day and watched the program Monday through Friday. So she was just into it. Well. And she was, in, she was one of the few people in these that had a television. So she's watching what's on. You know, you went and went home at lunch. You turned the damn TV on. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, the TV then was the most magical thing in the world. Oh, I mean, by far. Just, I mean, Iris and her husband, who was a jeweler in town, they were known for having a television. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember. Close and, you know, not nearly there, but uh, close enough that I just remember TVs being so special. Um, I remember walking around as a little bitty kid, and you could see the TV through a window of a house or an apartment or something. It's like, oh, what's that? What's going on there? You know, it's like... Well, I'm surprised that you were, but I sure remember those days. Well, the thing is, you know, even if your family had a TV, you only got three channels. You're lucky if you can get one of them to come in right. You're adjusting it constantly, playing with the antennas constantly, moving them up, down, putting tinfoil on them, this, that, the I other. I did not remember that you would be of age to remember that. Oh, Lord. I remember thinking that it was a huge scientific operation to get that damn channel to come in clearly. Adjust, 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 move, tinfoil on, tinfoil off, tinfoil up, down. I'll be down. This and that and the other. I'm, I'm surprised. Well, it, you know, uh, sometimes you would have three channels and you would just click, click, click. But then a lot of times the reception just wasn't very good. And you had to play and play and play and play to even find anything to watch. Certainly, I remember those days. I'm just surprised that it went over to your period. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, certainly I remember it anyway. Because like I said, if I would see in someone's window when I was walking down the street or walking around the apartment complex of Wales Garden, if I would see a clear picture coming in, I'd be like, oh, let me look at that for a second from out here. Because mm. that's a clear picture. Uh, just also, just what's on TV? It was so... I feel just a little surprised because I can remember when I came back from from trying to play football, Big Jim 
him and I were watching, you know, the pro game. Mm-hmm. And we were usually watching the Washington Center, Washington Redskins. Even then, and that would have been about when you were born at that period. Well, you know, it's just little vague stages of development. But, uh, I, I certainly remember a lot of primitive stuff. I still remember thinking that when I looked in a store window walking down the street, you know, in town or something like that, and if there was a TV in there, it's like, oh, look at, oh my God, I'm looking at TV and I'm not at home. I, as a little kid, I just yeah, thought that yeah, was yeah. insane. It's just a shock to me that by the time you were an, a person, that it was that way. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like TV, you know, sometimes it just seemed like it was barely there when I was really little. It just seemed like, oh, Lord, the reception, this and that and the other. Can't really count on it. Well, I, it's just my memory that I'm, that I'm losing, but... Uh, but then, too, as time went along, as I got a little older, they started having those UHF channels and stuff like that. I mean, before cable... There was some branching out into some different little things, and you could find smaller channels yeah. on the UHF. Well, that's way on for me. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Oh, no, that is way on. That is way on. But even then, that's part of my memory about adjusting, adjusting, adjusting to get those things to come in. It was, uh, we had to fight back in those days to get actual. Mm-hmm. And Asheville had ABC. Asheville was ABC. And in those days, they were carrying a lot of the football I was looking for. I oh, am. Yeah. I still think my memory of, um, and this is many years past what we're talking about, um, I think my memory of the Jets uh, beating the Colts in the, it wasn't the first Super Bowl, um, was it? Third. Third, yeah. I think that memory is at noon, if that time adds up right. That what? My memory of when I saw that game, I think was when we lived in Noonan. Oh. So many years later after what we were talking about. 